Okay, let's get started. So today, I think, is like, I think today is the last lecture on um, SQL code for uh, doing que like select queries. So we're gonna like f cover the last the last few topics related to that. Um, a few announcements. Uh, second homework is due on Monday. Homework one solutions will be posted soon. Um, if you got through homework two already, I'm going to post another practice homework set. Actually, it's already posted. There are a couple of homework assignments from last year uh, that I put, put on Canvas, which would be good practice for um, the exam, which is in two weeks from today, the midterm exam. So uh, check that out. Last lecture, we covered outer joins and cross joins. And uh, we kind of we, we pointed out the fact that the join we initially were talking about, the default kind of join, is actually an inner join. And uh, I had these Venn diagrams to like show kind of abstractly what the different possibilities were with um, joins. And the overlap here between A and B means that you have rows from A and rows from B where uh, there's a matching based on satisfying the join predicate. So usually it's like some column from one table is, is equal to some, some column in the other table. And by default, yeah, an inner join prints out only the, the rows that have a matching. There's also a left outer join that is similar to, to the default type, but it also includes rows from the first table that never satisfy the join predicate. In other words, rows that weren't able to find any match in the other table are still included in this left join. Uh, and that's why this Venn diagram picture shows the shading on the uh, all of A, including the part of A that overlaps with B. Uh, you can use that with a where condition to create le a left join with exclusion, which is where you basically do the left join, but then you filter out all the rows that had a matching. You do that by checking whether making sure that you have a null value on, on columns that come from the second table. And that'll only happen if there wasn't a match. It lets you answer certain questions about, like, uh, yeah, basically things not matching. And we also showed cross-join, which is um, also called Cartesian product, where you take all the rows from one table, all the rows from another table, and you combine them in every possible combination. So you go from, like, M and N rows to M times N rows, because every one from the first table will have a rep be combined with every one from the second table. All right, so that creates a ton of possibilities. Um, that doesn't have any on condition to decide like how to match things up because everything is matched with everything. Okay, any questions about that? No. All right, so today I'm going to one of the things I'm going to introduce is combining selects with union, intersect, and accept. And I'm going to be using the same Venn diagrams to illustrate the three different the differences between these t three, but th abstractly these are going to be referring to different concepts than we had here, although the pictures are the same. Okay, but union uh, is a, a a keyword you can put between two select commands that prints rows from both of them. So it's it's like you run one query, you run another query, and then you print the results from both of them together. Intersect is similar, where you run two queries, but then you only print out the results that were common in both of them, right? So that's why it's just the the intersection or the, uh, the overlapping part of the diagram. And except is where you you do run those two queries, but then you only print the rows that are in the first result, but not in the second result. So it's like a subtraction kind of thing, and we just show that the abstractly that we're, we're just including the items from A, meaning just the results that came from the first query, but only if they weren't also in the second query, okay? Union, intersect, and accept. All right, so both join, which we talked about the past two lectures, and these like unions, intersects, and accepts, both of these two things are ways to combine multiple tables, actually. But they combine multiple tables in different ways. So the first one we've been talking about, joins, kind of combine tables horizontally, or at least that's the way I think about it. Right? You, take row, you take a row from one table and you kind of stick it together or concatenate it with a row from another table, and you end up with a bigger table. Right? You, take, you take two narrow table, tables and you make a fat table, a wider table. 
Uh, and we have some rules for figuring out how to match up the rows, right? That's the on condition. So it creates a wider virtual table from two narrower tables, okay? Uh, union, so this new thing we're talking about today, both union and intersect and accept different, also, except they work slightly differently, but at least union is kind of the simplest form of it where you're combining two results, but you combine them horizontally. So instead of combining tables uh, horizontally, you sorry, you combine them vertically for union, you combine them horizontally for join. So um, you might print some results from, what, from the first table and then print some results from the second table and you kind of like list out what came from both results. So it's like a vertical combination. Uh, in order for this to work, you need the number and type of the columns to match from the two queries, right? You can't combine things vertically if they have different numbers of columns or if things in the columns are not the same kind because then you won't have a composite table that makes any sense because things will change halfway through, right? And similarly, when you join, you have to have like rows that s you have to specify some, cr some predicate that, that some criterion, some rule for when to join ro rows together. With um, unions, you, you just have to make sure that the same number of columns and the types of those columns are the same when you're combining those together, okay? And we'll see why these, that's useful with some examples uh, in this lecture. Okay. So union is the simplest one, which I talk about more. Intersect and accept follow the same pattern, but then you can look at those uh, Venn diagrams to remember how they're different. But basically, um, they combine results from two select statements. You have uh, one select, select something, and then union, select something. So you just kind of stick it together like that, very simple syntax. Um, the first half has to be a valid select statement that you could run and get a result from. The second half has to be something that you could copy, paste, and run and get a result from. And those results have to look similar in the sense of having the same number of columns and the same types in all the columns. If that's true, then you can just stick a union between them and get a combined result. Okay. Um, really, the only time this is really useful is when those selects are happening on different sets of tables. It doesn't have to be from different sets of tables. But if you weren't getting data from different tables, then you might as well just have one query to begin with. Okay. Um, yeah. If you're getting data from the same table, you can use a where clause or maybe an and to 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 replace the union. But if you're getting data from different tables, then union could be the only way to to do that combination. Um, if you know if we you, if you use a join to get data from two different tables then the data ends up being in different columns, which might not be what you want. If you want it to be in the same, if you want the results from two tables to be in the same column, then you can use a union. Um, yeah, so here's an example this on the very bottom from the sales orders ta uh, ta database that you've been using. It's printing out the names of customers and the names of employees, like the names of all the people in the system, basically. But there's no one people table that has all the names. The names are split between two different tables. And um, the only way to get that result in like one column of names is to do a union. So you select the customer first name from customers, and you also select the employee first name from employees, and you union them together. So you have a union word in between the two, and it'll kind of like run this query and, and run the second query and combine the results. Okay. Th does, that, does that make sense, a simple example? Do you see how you couldn't get this with a join, though? That's a little more complicated. But generally, when you do a join, you're, you're combining the two tables horizontally. You're create, creating a larger virtual table. Um, so you could have a, a result with a join that maybe had all the names listed, but some of the names would be listed in one column from the first table, and then the other table would provide the names in a different column. And there was no easy way to combine the two without really, you might be able to do it with some hacky like string concatenation stuff. Uh, but there's no clean way to do it with just join. Union is, is really the way to do it. Okay. So um, union, intersect, and accept allow a lot of possibilities. Uh, but there are a lot of cases when you, you sh really don't need it. And I, I would recommend that you only use these things when they're really necessary. And these are some examples where uh, I s wrote a query with a union or an accept, but then I didn't really need it. So the first one is saying, um, 
select star from staff or name equals equals Jane, and also union select star from staff or name equals John. So basically, it's printing all the staff information for Jane and printing all the staff information for John. You can do that with a union. They'll give you two rows, uh, or maybe more rows if there are many people with that name. But you could also accomplish this with a one-line uh, select statement that goes from, because they're both operating on the same table. It's just that you're using two, we use two queries because we wanted to test two different things. But actually, we have this or uh, conjunction that we can use to test two things at the same time anyway. So we could say where name equals Jane or name equals John. And that would allow, in a single pass of that one table, that allows us to get the results that match either one of those. Okay, so that is a simplification where uh, we didn't actually need union, but we could use union if we wanted to, and, and it would be less efficient to use union. Yes. So we only use I think that is probably correct. I, I I'm not sure. You might be, if you think. I, I would encourage you to think about it, and after we learn more about it, and maybe try to come up with some examples where you need it, where it's from the same table, or where you don't need it, and it's from uh, two. T uh, yeah, where you need it, and it's from the same table. But generally, yes. Y I think the short answer, I think, is yes. Uh, you use it when you're getting data from two different tables, uh, and you want it in the same column. The second example is, uh, what is this doing? Select star from student schedules, natural join students. So this is getting the schedule information for, um, and where accept is like a subtraction. So it subtracts from the results from the first query, the results from the second query, which is select star from student schedules, natural join students, where grade is null. So this is the list of all the um, schedule li line items, like the enrollments. That, are, that don't have a grade, so either the student dropped out or the, the class isn't finished yet. So this would print out all the enrollments where there's a grade, basically. Because it starts off with all the enrollments, it subtracts the ones where there's no grade. Again, that's valid, but you could simplify it to, because it's using the same table, uh, you can simplify it to one where it's just getting the data from that um, I sorry when I s when I say it's getting the same t using the same table it's it's a little more complicated than before because it's using the same composite table, right? It's using student schedules, natural joint students. They're both using student schedules, natural joint students. Okay, that whole from the whole from uh, section is the same. And in the uh, simplified one, you just do the same thing except you have a filter that makes that checks to see that the grade is not null, right? So it's just by inverting that. Uh, condition, you can get the same result. Make sense? Okay. So uh, to motivate this, let's do some examples, just a couple, and then we'll go back to talking about some new, some other syntax. This question is, d is asking to display the missing types of recipes. Um, missing types of recipes. What what does that mean? Uh, I think it means missing classes of recipes. So we have recipe classes. Some of them are actually not represented at all in the recipes table. This might have even been an example for another uh, on another lecture where we answered it with left join or something. But we can do this with uh, accept. Um, dis display missing types of recipes. So how how might you solve this this uh, problem now that we have union intersect and accept? You can try to do it on your own. We'll come to it in a second. Union was like <laughs> intersect was this middle part. Except was this part. Any ideas? Which of these three uh, keywords can we use that makes the most sense for this uh, 
missing types of recipes. Again, if the question is worded weirdly, missing types of recipes. I mean, recipes, recipe classes that don't have a recipe of that class. So I'll give you a hint and say that you can use accept to do it. Okay. Which means which is kind of a subtraction thing. Right? So what are you going to subtract from what? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, so what does recipes give you? Like, wh why, why are you using the recipes uh, table? Okay, so you could print, you, you can use recipes table to print out the recipe class IDs that are represented, right? Uh, and you can use the recipe classes for what? True, but also to see the full list of recipes, the classes, right? So you can do like recipe classes, all the recipe class IDs from this table minus all the recipe class IDs from this table. And then you, then you could join it with uh, recipe classes if you wanted the description. So select star from recipe recipes, and not select just select stars, but recipe select like distinct recipe class ID. That's not a word. That's still not a word. Can't do the spelling. All right, so these are all the six different recipe class ID numbers that are used in the recipes. And that's smaller than what we get when we just like select uh, all of the recipe class IDs from the table that lists them. Recipe classes. Um, well, I, I Okay, so see how that how that worked. We printed out from the first table. The first table is the recipe classes table, and that that lists out every recipe class. So the, this prints out all the recipe class IDs from there, but it subtracts from that. So it starts off with all of them, but it subtracts from that the ones that actually are listed in the recipe table. And the answer is seven. I don't know what that is, but you could take this whole thing and like um, use it in a subquery. Or you could also join, but I think um, maybe a faster one would be to use a join uh, subquery. Yeah, so it's soups. There are no soups in this uh, database. Make sense? All right. And I guess, uh, yeah, there actually are, th I have three ways of doing this, uh, same query. The last one is what I showed with the accept, but you can also use a left join to uh, basically take the recipe classes and join those up with the recipes and group it by, by recipe class. But because it's a left join, it keeps the entries that didn't match anything. And then you can do a having filter to filter out the ones where the count was zero. Um, so that also would work, but it's just like longer and harder to understand. 
right? Uh, that quote, I guess, shouldn't be there. Okay. So uh, we'll come back to doing some ex other examples with these, these, all these three. But another thing I want to cover today is uh, like formally covering predicates briefly. Uh, and uh, also like sort of if then else statements that are available. So we have where and having clauses in, in SQL queries for filtering out rows according to predicates. We also use these predicates in the on statements for joins. A predicate is, a, is just a fancy word for like a rule or a, you know, a formula that evaluates the true or false. A predicate is a true or false formula. And true or false formulas usually are, um, are, are built up out of like binary operators, like if what, testing whether two things are equal, not equal, greater than or less than, greater or less than. Um, like is for string matching. And then you can combine mo other expressions with and and or. Uh, like you can do that really in any language. And regex is similar to like, which we'll talk about later for doing string matching using a pattern. There's also arithmetic that can go into uh, computing values before you do a comparison. Or uh, you can use a value directly as a predicate if you consider zero to be false and any non-zero value to be true. And there's also, yeah, this double pipe is a string concatenation. This percent thing is modular, uh, it, it modular division. And uh, there's bit shifting, which is weird, and other bitwise. The, all these last four are, are weird uh, integer bitwise operations, which you're not probably going to do. And then we also have not, if you want to take a predicate and invert the result. So not something is true whenever the expression is false, and, and reverse is, is also true. We can t if we want to test whether something is null, we can't use equal. We have to say is. So uh, we can test whether something is null or is not null. There's also between which is similar, to, you don't really need this. You could use um, a combination of two uh, greater than or less than uh, operations together. But you can say like, you can test whether x is between zero and four so by saying, or saying you know, x between zero and four. Uh, that, that works in SQL. There's also testing to see whether something is, is in a set. If you have like multiple possible values that are allowed uh, you can use in. That was convenient uh, in a couple cases that we had. And of course, you can put anything inside parentheses and then apply these operators again. Okay, so that's this is the kind of stuff that you see in lots of programming languages. Um, the particular details of these lo these last ones is maybe unique to SQL, but um, they're not terribly hard to uh, understand or use, um, really. But I wanted to at least have a list that you could refer to uh, when you're thinking about building queries. We also have aggregations, which um, I guess those aren't predicates, but you can, you can inside these aggregations, you can have any kind of uh, formulas uh, that use these things if you wanted to. Uh, uh, in certain cases, that might be useful. Yeah. And one case where you would combine those two ideas, a predicate and an aggregator, is uh, summing an indicator variable uh, this is a common pattern, which is a little bit unusual, so I wanted to just have a slide on it. Example I'm covering here is, is where, when we're, one where we're trying to count the recipes uh, that have the word salsa in the description. So here you could say select count from recipes where recipe title like salsa. Like that's, that's a simple solution to this relatively simple problem. So the, it does some filtering using this uh, predicate here. The recipe title has to be like percent salsa percent. That's a pattern. And then after we do that filtering, we count up what's left. That gives us the answer. But an alternative to that would be not to filter, but to create a value that when summed gives the same answer. So if you select sum and then parentheses recipe title like salsa from recipes, this gives the same answer. Actually, I'm not sure which is. Yeah, tech, the first one is easier to understand. The second one is technically shorter, maybe, barely. Um, but there's some cases where you, you'll want to do something like this uh, for clarity or just uh, 
this might be the only way you can think of doing something, but anyway. So my, my point is that for every row in the recipes table here, in the second example, it's computing this value inside th that's being selected. Um, and inside the aggregator, it's it, you can see what's computed for each row before the aggregation. It's taking the recipe title, it's doing a comparison with, with Salsa, and that because it's a predicate, it returns 0 or 1, depending on whether it's true or false, right? And so basically, you have on this table, this table is supplemented with all these 0 or 1 values for each row, and those zeros and 1s are added up. So you end up getting the same answer because you the the ones the number of, of ones that are added is exactly equal to the number of rows that have this to be true. And then for all the rest, you add up zeros, which don't affect your answer, right? So I call this summing an indicator variable. This is the, inside the sum, that's an indicator variable because it's true to indicate that some condition is, is, um, uh, is true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one to indicate whether a condition is true. Make sense? Okay. Those are both possible, uh, and then you know I might you might see some examples. You, you should understand how to how to do queries with these indicator variables, even though they might not always be necessary. All right. So the final uh, tool, uh, you know, new bit of syntax I'm introducing today, uh, before we do some more examples, is the case statement, which is kind of like an if-then-else expression, which you find in, in a lot of languages. Um, having a language without if is very difficult. SQL, we can do a lot without if, but there's some cases where we still might want to do an if. Uh, so basically what this means is that we have, it, it's, in, it's actually called case in SQL, not if. So it's like case when, and then you have some test, some predicate, and if that test is true, then something, if it's false, else something. So case when, blah, then blah, else, blah, end. And the first part is the test, and then the other two things are what is replaced, what's used in the cases where it's true and the cases where it's false. Right? So it's exactly like if, if, then else. And these actually can be used almost anywhere in a SQL command where you'd want something to have two different values. Uh, depending on something that you want to test. And so here's an example where I'm building a query that really can only be answered using a case uh, keyword. So I want to print the first name. So I imagine I have some kind of people database. And the people have ages, and they have first names, and they have last names, and they have genders uh, in, this, in this database. So it's like four columns or something. And I want the... What I'm asking for is a list of names, right? But for children, I'm going to be informal and use first names. And for adults, I'm going to say Mr. something or Ms. something, right? So that's kind of, so what I'm printing is different depending on some quality of the data in that row, right? Specifically, depending on the age, I'm going to switch between first name and last name. And then depending on the gender, I'm going to switch between Mr. and Ms., right? And so I've, I've, I've a nested like two if statements within each other, right? And I have them in two different colors, so you can kind of parse them out. Uh, on the outside, it says case when age is less than 18, then first name. So basically what you do is you take this whole case thing, like this, 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 this whole er thing from the case to the end is substituted with either the second or the third thing, depending on the val whether the first thing evaluates to true or false. So if age is less than 18, then we're going to be selecting the first name. Otherwise, we're going to be selecting this thing, whatever that is. And it's coming from the people table. Okay, so this allows us to print first name if it's less than 18. Otherwise, it's going to do this last name thing. But the last name thing is complicated because that also depends on a variable in the row, which in this case is the gender. So inside parentheses, I put another case statement um, and that is testing whether the gender is male, and if it is, then it's going to use this, uh, it's going to take this constant Mr. period space. Otherwise, it's going to use the constant Ms. period space. And then regardless of what happens here with the case, at the end, it's going to concatenate it with the last name. So that double pipe is like a string concatenation. So we get Mr. last name or Ms. last name. 
Okay, makes sense. Yep. So here's a more clearly illustrated example of case. Again, it's an if then else uh, clause. And this whole, I highlighted this whole thing in gray because basically you just take, you, you have some select statements. Like if without this case in the middle, it would be very simple. It would be like select something from products. There's some table called products and we're printing out some column from it, right? But exactly what we do in here is going to be conditional because I have a case statement. So depending on this, this condition here, category ID equals two, if that's true, then we're going to be selecting um, bike, just a, a constant bike. It's in quotes, so that means it's like a constant. It's not the name of a column or something like that. Otherwise, we're going to be printing this, the value of this column name, product name. So uh, this is printing out from the products table a listing of product names, except if it's a bike, it doesn't list the bike's real name. It just lists the word bike as a substitute. So like we see... Uh, we don't see the details for the bike. We just see the string bike that was provided here in those cases. Does that make sense? Okay. So if it's if this first line is is true, we substitute the, what's in the second. Otherwise, we substitute what's in the third. And it's we just have to look at these, break out these three parts of the case when, then, else statement to do that. All right, so here's another example that's more practical, let's say. Um, we're, this is with a sales uh, orders database. Uh, let's say we want to print out the sale prices for products that are overstocked. Otherwise, we want to print retail prices. So if there's more than 20 items on hand, we want to discount the price by 25%. We want to like get rid of these products. We have too many of them, right? Um, for all the other products that don't, don't, are not overstocked, we want to just have the regular price listed. So this is a way to generate a price, cat a price listing that is, uh, that's like dynamic. It's, uh, you know, it, it takes into account a, a discounting rule that is different for different products. Right? So, he, so I, um, the, the part highlighted in green is, is you know, the interesting part where there's a case statement, but otherwise it's a, very, a pretty simple query. Select so like product name, quantity on hand, retail price. Um, the fourth thing that's printed, which is the price, um, is controlled conditionally, comes from the product table. And exactly what's printed out depends on, remember, this is, there are always three parts to a case statement. The first one is the predicate. If it's true, then the second thing is, is used for that row. If it's false for that row, then the third thing is used for that row. So if quantity on hand is greater than or equal to 20, then we're going to print out 0.75 times the retail price. Otherwise, we're just going to print the retail price. Okay. So that, that's pretty useful. So far, I, I've, seen, I've shown how case can be used in the select, like to determine what to print out, kind of, in a dynamic way. But you can also use it in filters. Uh, you can filter based on different criteria and different rows according to some test that you have, right? So here, I want to print the customers named Martin. But if we're in this, I said the friendly state of California, we're going to use the first name. So we want to print people in California with the first name of Martin. But elsewhere, we're going to use the last name of Martin. We're going to look for the last name of Martin in that test. So it's like we're getting a value, which is the name. But where we get that name from, which column we pull the name from, will be different depending on the state that we're in. Okay, So select star from customers. Uh, th that, that part's simple, just getting all the information from the customer table. But the filtering is, uh, is checking for a match with the string Martin. What exactly it tests with Martin is conditional. It's different depending on whether the customer state is CA California. If it is, then customer first name is, is replaced, is used, otherwise customer last name is used, which, which that, would, that would apply when this evaluates to false, meaning that the customer state is not California, right? And keep in mind, there are other ways to do this. Like, uh, you, could you could have this query in the bottom that did select star from customers where um, 
either the customer state is California and the first name is Martin, or the customer state is not California and the last name is Martin. That's equivalent. That's a typo. Sorry. I don't know why there's so many typos in this one. Um. All right. So this is a pretty uh, difficult example. Tell me e if each re recipe is vegetarian, and if not, then name the meat ingredient. Uh, let's see if we can work through this. I guess I don't have. So I think we could, we should start s attacking this problem by just trying to print out a lot of information, like print out all the. Um, you, know, you can print out the recipes and join that with the ingredients, and join that with the ingredient class. So you have like a you can build a, a table out of three subtables that combines recipe information with uh, ingredients and ingredients with the ingredient category, kind of uh, right. So if we print out all the recipes. And natural join that with recipe ingredients. And natural join that with actually not natural join because the measure amount ID is going to be different. Join it with the um, we're just kidding. Actually, we can do it. Natural join with the uh, ingredient classes. Okay. Yeah, this still isn't quite right. This, so we see that there are 2,000 results. That's actually way more than the number of total ingredients in all the recipes. Does anyone know why, where I went wrong here? If you look at the data, you can see that it's like it's repeating the same. Like Irish stew has uh, ingredient one in step one is repeated many times for all the different ingredient classes. Yeah, so it is, um, but specifically, what's what's happening? So the first two, I'm going to just tell you, are, are fine. Recipes and recipe ingredients can be naturally joined, uh, no problem. Actually, the second join is where things went wrong, because ingredient classes, the columns in there are just ingredient class ID and ingredient class description. You can see that on the right-hand side. But then in the recipe ingredients table, these are the columns. So there's no match, right? You see that? So we're trying to natural join uh, two tables, or I mean, really, a, a table with with a, a two combined tables. But anyway, between those, the, the last table recipe ingredients and either of the two two previous ones. Um, between ingredient classes and either recipe ingredients or recipes, there's no overlap of column names. You see, like these two, there, these two that are in this third table I'm joining in, that doesn't match any of these column names. And if that's true, then it'll do a, a little cross join, basically. It'll join every row with every other row. So, how do I fix that? What did I mean to do? 
Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot a step. There's a table. If we had a picture, it would be more easy to see. Um, but, yeah, there's an recipe ingredients refers to the uh, ingredient ID, and then you have to cross-reference that with the ingredients table to get the class for that ID. And so I, so I join that with ingredients on the ingredient ID. I, I can't because the measure amount ID is also a common column. That's just a weird fun feature of this. Uh, there are actually two columns in that pa those pairs of tables that are the same. And sometimes, even though the, measure the ingredient ID matches, the measurement amount ID is different. OK, so now when I run it, I get the 88 rows I was expecting. And on the right-hand side, I can see some of these are meat, some of them are vegetable. Uh, basically, there's like uh, seafood and meat are the ones I want to avoid if I'm vegetarian. So yeah, so how can I determine whether the recipe is vegetarian? And name the meat ingredient if it isn't. Uh, it's kind of complicated. This is definitely one where you have to go step by step. Uh, from here, um, we can. Uh, We can f filter out the ones where where it's uh, meat or fit or uh, seafood. Like that. I mean, this this would tell us which ones. This would list us list basically all the uh, meat ingredients being used, and then um, what the recipes were on the left. You kind of see that? Make sense? But then also we've lost the vegetarian ones because we filtered those out. Um, So we probably want to do some kind of a left join to combine, to on the left have the recipes and on the right having meat ingredients. And in some cases there'll be a match, in some cases there won't be a match, right? So on the left, let's have recipes. So we'll have recipes on the left and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll left natural join the second half. And it might, the way I, in my thinking right now, it's it's. I'm thinking of using a subquery. To get the second half, um, we select star from recipe ingredients, join ingredients. Uh, basically, filtering out the. Uh, so this this breakpoint here is where we switch from the left col left table to the right table in the left join. And in some cases, and actually it's actually here, sorry, because notes sometimes are, are null even if for no good reason. Um, like the f this first one we're seeing is Irish stew, which has beef. Then the second one, salsa buena, and the third one, uh, nachos nachos, both of those don't have any match with this second um, table that was generated from this uh, subquery. So, so those are actually vegetarian uh, recipes, right? 
So let's, let's try to uh, simplify this a bit. There's a lot on the screen, a lot of columns and stuff. So let's just look at the recipe title. And the ingredient name. Okay. So that's a pretty clear view of all the recipes. And then for those that have meat, it lists the meat ingredient. For some of them that have two meat ingredients, it actually lists it twice. So, okay. I think at this point we've gotten pretty close to we have like we have the data available on screen to answer to build a, a query that answers the the original question, which was to say uh, say whether a recipe is vegetarian and if not name the meat ingredient. Let's say we just wanted to make a column in this output that indicated whether it was uh, vegetarian or not. How could we do that? If we want to add a column, we just, we just add something to this uh, list of columns we're printing. All right, so we put another comma and we just type something in here. All right, so what would that be? And we're going to call it uh, is vegetarian. Okay, that's going to be the name of the column. We have to have some value to evaluate to determine whether it's vegetarian. It'll be true if it, you know, be one or true if it's uh, vegetarian, false or uh, zero if it's not vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah, except we have to say it is null. Like, that's just one of those things we need to remember. Uh, yeah, so then you'll see that that nicely follows the pattern of like um, where there's a null, where there's a value here is zero, or otherwise it's it's one. Okay, so that's that's pretty close. But what I actually want in, in this from this query, which is kind of weird, but I, I want like an 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 English sentence that says re this recipe is vegetarian or this veg recipe is not vegetarian because it has something yeah yeah you need a case so um, so basically that this is a long query and thankfully I don't think we need to change the query like the main query part of it but we need to change what we're printing to be something that uses a case statement like you said to construct text that's different depending on on these conditions right and of course, the main condition is this is vegetarian. So, like in ingredient name is null, is a predicate that we can use in our case statement uh, to, con to to allow two different behaviors to happen, right? So, if we change this to say case ingredient name is null. Uh, then something else, something end. So if if it's if the ingredient name is null, then it's vegetarian. So we can say uh, it, you know is vegetarian. Otherwise, we can say is not. And we can turn this into, we can s construct a like little phrase by putting in the recipe name, concatenating that with, with the rest. Actually, I think we need a space in here. Okay, how does case work? Case when, I forgot the when. Message column recipe name, recipe title, I think is what it is. Okay, so in the output, 
we see, let me just give this a name uh, to shorten it as output. Okay, so there's a bunch of sentences to say like, Fettuccine Alfredo is vegetarian, P Pollo Picoso is not vegetarian, and so on, right? That's kind of cool. But the second part of the question is to name the meat ingredient if it's not vegetarian. So basically we have to we have to do more than just this, right? We have to do more than just say it's not vegetarian. We have to say why it's not vegetarian. Yeah. Any ideas for how we can do that? Yeah. Um is has uh how do we get the ingredient name? Uh, just ingredient name. Okay. Yeah. That kind of that seems to work, right? How do we prevent this from being duplicated? Distinct? Uh, that won't work because these are different. Group by. What do we group by? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it could be recipe title or recipe ID is like more, uh, it's like shorter and still gets it done. And now it ha that's better. I mean, the only problem is that we only like list one ingredient where we could list multiple ones. I believe there's a there's a there's, I think there's a command to like uh, take you could do a subquery to get a list of meat ingredients and then turn that into a string that has commas between it. I forget I forget exactly what the syntax is for that, but um, I think that is possible as well. But that's as far as we're going to go in this example. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that is kind of uh, what we came up with. Except here, actually, we didn't do as well as uh, we hard coded the meat or seafood there instead of joining with the table. Okay, so, whoa, yeah. So this is a query I put up yesterday, or not yesterday, on, on Tuesday, at the end of class, and I said it was a, a question that required both cross-join and left-join to print every pair of recipes and the number of ingredients they shared in common. And, uh, I got the. I, f I figured out the answer to it <laughs> uh, after class. So um, is this class over at three twenty? Is that right? Okay. So we have time. Um, but I'll, I'm just gonna go ahead and show the answer to this one because it's kind of uh, a nightmare to build, but. So it's asking for every pair of recipes, and that's kind of a clue that you should be using a cross join because it says every pair. So I take the two recipes, uh, two copies of the recipe table. I have to give them aliases like R1 and R2, so I can know which which one of the copies I'm talking about. I cross join them together, and then I join that with recipe ingredients two different copies of the recipe ingredients table actually. So first, first I join it with, first I look for ingredients that are in the first recipe. That's what I1 is, the table of ingredients, uh, where the recipe, recipe one ID is matching that ingredient, uh, ingredients recipe ID, right? So this, this uh, line here gets all the ingredients in the first, first recipe. 
And then I do a left join with the recipe ingredients again, giving it a different name, I2. This time I'm looking for the, those ingredients that are in the second recipe. But I'm also, so this, now I have an on condition that has two things. The rest, the uh, ingredient has to be in the second recipe. So I2 dot recipe ID is equal to R2 dot recipe ID. So second recipe has this ingredient, but also that has to it has to be the same ingredient as one as as one that was in the first uh, recipe. And then I group by I'm actually grouping by two different columns uh, together. So that means that uh, the but the pair of these two columns has to be the same. Uh, meaning the, the pair of the two the two recipes in this case, and then finally I uh, the last two lines are not essential, but if I want to print every pair once instead of having like a b and then later b a, I uh, want to require that the I, that the first recipe's ID is less than the second recipe ID because that'll only be true for one ordering and not the other. So it'll be a b and then later it won't be b a. Uh, and then I just, just ordered by the number of ingredients and ran it, and that gives you something like uh, this. So it lists it lists uh, 105 different combinations of recipe pairs of com of recipes, which is all of them. And apparently, there are two recipes that share four ingredients in common. There are a few that share three, and a bunch that have none in common near the bottom, and a bunch that have one in common, as you'd expect. But uh, yeah, so that was a complicated query. So I, let me just uh, quickly illustrate why <laughs> this this thing, this second to last line. The reason I have that is like I I, I have when I just do a cross join. If I have two columns. If I, have t if I have a table that has values A, B, and C, and I, I do a cross join, it would be like A, 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 B, A, C, and then B, A, B, 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 C, uh, B, C, C, A, C, B, and C, C. Right? That, that's the cross product of this set here. If I require that like the second value be less then the first value that rules out this one because they're the same, this one, this one, keeps this one, rules out this one, uh, rules out this one, and it keeps, no, uh, it keeps these two. Right, the second one is less than the first one. So I end up with just the only three combinations that are uh, legitimate for these three, right? B, A, there's no like A, B, it's just the reverse. All the other ones are just reverses of, of these ones, or they're like the same thing combined with itself, which I don't want. That's right. Okay. Okay, so one more query. Uh, I want you to try this one on your own for a few minutes. Print all the ingredients and any recipes they're used in. So if a recipe is used in multiple, if a recipe is not used at all, um, if an ingredient is not used at all, it should still be printed. But if it's printed in several recipes, I want you to print all those recipes uh, alongside it. And I'll be back in a minute.
Anyone get it? Okay, so we can start solving this problem by getting all the ingredients, right? Select star from ingredients. But we want to join it up with recipes where they're used, but we don't want to um, we don't want to lose any ingredients just because they're not used. So the fact that it says all ingredients is a hint that we need to use a left join instead of a regular join. Uh, so we left join that with. Um, recipe ingredients, right? Using the uh, recipe, uh, we do a left natural join. And we also need to join that with recipe ingredients gets joined to the recipe to, to get the recipe name out of the ID. In this case, we need to have an on condition recipes dot recipe ID equals whatever is in the recipe ingredients table. And instead of selecting star, let's just print out the ingredient name and the recipe uh, title. I don't know, is that right though? I thought beef was used in uh, something. Right? I don't know, my slide says 99 rows, which suggests that it's right. But I thought beef was in something, yeah. The ingredients and recipe ingredients? Ah, yeah. So, I, I th you're right. Um, I can do a natural join for the second one, but not the first one. And I, I got those reversed. And th so the problem is specifically when, when beef is used in that recipe, it's used in a quantity, like a measurement type that's different than what the default measurement type is for beef. Uh, so let's do it. An on condition of like ingredients that ingredient ID equals recipe ingredients dot ingredient ID. And there's 108 rows. And that looks more like it. There still are some that are not used, like vinegar, scallops, butterhead lettuce. But beef indeed is used in these two recipes. So my slide should say 108. So, and this, this query is probably wrong. Yeah. So I'll fix that after, uh, after lecture and repost it. Okay. So today we um, introduced some new syntax, union, intersect, and accept. These are used to combine two select statements uh, where we're, we're kind of joining result tables vertically instead of the horizontal joining that we did uh, with, with joins. And these are necessary when the answer requires two different virtual tables. We didn't have a ton of examples actually that did that, but um, we'll get more practice with that later, I, th I think. We also discussed some advanced use of predicates, like summing an indicator variable, and also the case statement, which is like an if then else kind of uh, uh, thing, which is it's quite useful. Okay, so uh, see you all later. Don't forget the practice homework's available. Um,
you can look at that. I'll also post, I, th I think, did I already post the practice midterms? I think I did. If not, there'll be, uh, I'll post that as well. Like the oh, it's not? Yeah, so I'll, I'll fix this uh, slide and I'll post it, yeah.